Hi and welcome to the No War Zone. The heightened war in the north has reportedly displaced over 200,000 people in recent months. The relocation of UN agencies and NGOs operating in the Vanni has raised concerns about the provisions of humanitarian assistance. To allay such concerns, the government held a media briefing to outline their efforts in providing humanitarian assistance for the people in the Vanni in the absence of these humanitarian organizations. For months now, thousands of people in the Vanni have been directly impacted by the fighting around them. They have had to flee their homes and have faced displacement on multiple occasions to evade being caught up in the fighting. According to the Bishop of Mana, who visited the Vanni recently, the number of people who've been displaced stands at around 150,000. UN reports indicate that the number of people displaced in July and August alone is around 80,000. There is an urgent need for humanitarian assistance in the form of food, medicine, sanitation facilities and shelter. But on September 8, 2008, the government requested all UN agencies and NGOs operating in the Vanni to relocate their offices to Vaunia by the 29th of September as it was no longer possible to guarantee the security of aid workers due to heightened conflict in the Vanni. The government points out that the relocation of these humanitarian agencies to Vaunia will not disrupt their ongoing work in the Vanni. Minister for Human Rights and Disaster Management Mahinda Samar Singha, chairing a special government media briefing on the 16th of September 2008, affirmed the government's stance and highlighted government mechanisms to provide humanitarian assistance to displaced populations in the Vanni. Secretary Defense very clearly stated that the UN agencies as well as the international organizations who have been complementing the efforts of the government which has been launched through the respective government, government agents where IDPs are present to provide humanitarian assistance and development assistance will continue, would continue out of Aunia. And we have also communicated to these international organizations and non-governmental organizations that when we are talking about the IDPs who are in Kilnochi today, we are talking about Sri Lankan citizens. We are not talking about outsiders. We are talking about our people. Therefore, the responsibility of looking after the IDPs, ensuring their safety, security, is the responsibility of the government. We understand that very clearly. We are willing to take that responsibility, and we have taken that responsibility in the past. We will continue to take that responsibility in the future. Vaunia is the last government-held town in the north and is also the relocation point for all humanitarian organizations. In early September, a group of civil society activists visited Vaunia on a fact-finding mission to find out more about the situation in Vaunia and the information available there about the Vanni. Tarika spoke to Dr. Saravana Muthu of the Centre for Policy Alternatives, who was also part of the fact-finding mission, to find out his impressions of the visit there. Uh, now, you have just returned from Vaunia, uh, from your fact-finding mission in Vaunia. Um, what were your first impressions when you got to Vaunia? The situation in terms of the Vanni, of course, is what is the top priority issue here. We're talking of anything upwards of 200,000 people who are in there. The government wants them out of the Vanni. The LTT wants them inside. The civilians are trapped. The Defence Secretary and the government of Sri Lanka has told the UN that it will not guarantee its, or it cannot guarantee, its security and therefore the UN and the international agencies are being pulled out. There is very clearly a responsibility to protect on the part of the state of Sri Lanka which is not being fulfilled and the LTT who claim to be a liberation movement, who claim to be a state in the process of formation etc. seems to have a callous disregard of the welfare of the very people it's supposed to be liberating. What did you think were the main challenges that needed to be addressed there? We are facing a horrendous humanitarian crisis. Mm. The government here has led the population in the South to believe that there is going to be a victory certain and imminent. If the population does not move, 
This means the population is trapped. It's going to be collateral damage, as they say in military jargon, when the army moves forward. If they are not going to be caught up in fighting, or if they're not going to be subjected to bombing, is it going to be the case that in order to induce the people out, the government is use, going to use what are basically old-fashioned siege tactics by controlling the, fo the flow of food and essential supplies into the money. The international organizations, the UN in particular, and the agencies need to hold firm and constantly remind themselves that yes, they can only be here if the government of Sri Lanka provides security, but they're here to serve a higher purpose, a humanitarian mission. Uh, now the government is planning to use uh, Vaunia as a point to set up relief services and uh, mm. temporary accommodation for those who have been displaced. Uh, did the mission note any of these mechanisms already put in place? Well, they are starting to do it, but they have a long way to go. Yeah, if they're expecting the kinds of numbers that we're talking about to come out of the money and to come out fast, the preparation has to be considerably expedited. And one of the problems, I think, with regard to people not coming out is, is that, yes, they are being used as human shields by the LTT who are forcibly keeping them in. There are some who are staying because they have members of the family who have been taken into the LTT, forced, voluntary, whatever. Some of them are obviously Tamil nationalists. But what we were also told was that quite a number of them are aware of what awaits them if they come out. The so-called welfare centers don't have a very good reputation in terms of the provision of basic facilities. Much worse, though, are the perceptions, real or imagined, and in some cases founded on fact, of abductions and disappearances within welfare centers as well. So what about in the Vanni itself? What are the relief services that are being provided there? There is a certain amount of food, there is a certain amount of medical supplies, etc., that are going in. The question here is, is as to whether, as the days and indeed the weeks go on, whether the, the quantum of essential supplies will be sufficient, whether the frequency of convoys when they have to go in will be sufficient. Now the humanitarian agencies have been asked to move out of the Vanni. What's the next step for them where they are concerned? What are the challenges that they will have to face now? To well, they are all now in Vaunia. I mean, the UN says it has been relocated to Vaunia and therefore that it will work in cooperation with the government to continue its humanitarian assistance. That goes for the other humanitarian agencies as well. So it is working now with the government to continue to send in supplies into the Vaunia. And what about the uh, civilians that are moving from the Vani in, uh, to Vaunia? Uh, what about their movements? Are the movements well, there inhibited? Aren't, or? There, there aren't that many who are coming out at the present moment. Okay. There aren't that many who are coming out at the present moment. And the issue, therefore, is as to whether in the next days and weeks, whether you will get a considerable, a significant amount coming out. We were told in Vaunia that LTT was using force with regard to conscripting people and sending them to the front. And we do know very definitely that they have used civilians in the past as civilian shields and that there is no um, unlikeliness of them doing so in the future. I mean, they are, they are very clearly fighting a last-ditch battle here and will do whatever is necessary in order to do so. Finally, what can we hope uh, for the future in terms of the situation in Sri Lanka when it comes to both the IDP situation and also the conflict? The key protagonists have got to come to an arrangement that, you know, we are signatories to all sorts of international conventions and all of that. There are international norms that govern the issue of civilians in armed conflict, govern the role of IDPs, the responsibilities of protagonists towards civilians and IDPs in situations of armed conflict. Those standards need to be uphold, upheld as much as possible. That is a key question, I think, at the moment. There has to be an agreement amongst those protagonists that they put the civilian welfare and safety and security uppermost in their minds. There's no way that you can liberate a people by subjecting them to this kind of violence. Thanks for talking with me, Dr. Saranamuttu. Thank you. Uh, your knowledge and insight has been very valuable. Thank you. Thanks.